Things are always changing, especially in sports. This season, the NBA implemented the Coach's Challenge, which gives coaches the opportunity to challenge a play that they want overturned. There are also some pretty big changes coming to the NHL soon, like Seattle coming into the league as the 32nd team starting in the 2021-22 season. Also starting in the playoffs, the NHL is implementing a new puck that is filled with electronical equipment and sensors and using it as a new way to track data. This this, along with the addition of Seattle to the NHL, are both things that could change the league forever. Which kind of got me thinking about some other events in the history of the NHL that really changed the league. So with all that being said, here are 8 events that changed the NHL forever. And if you guys do want to see more NHL content like this, make sure to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Beginning in 1998, the NHL and its players began partaking in the Olympics, and over the years with NHL players, players in the Olympic Games, it has given us some unbelievable moments. One of those moments taking place in the very first Olympic Games with NHL players involved, and that is when Czech Republic, against all odds led by Dominic Hoshik and Jaromir Jagr, won the first gold medal in their team's history. Another one of those amazing moments came in the 2010 Vancouver Olympics when Sidney Crosby scored the overtime winner for Team Canada to capture the gold medal. Unfortunately, the last time we saw NHL players in the Olympics was in 2014 when Canada captured the gold medal in Sochi, and of course in the 2018 Olympics, NHL players were not involved. Which in my opinion is very lame. In these best on best tournaments, I want to see the best players from every country going at it for the gold medal, and I really feel like that is what made the Olympic hockey game so special all the way from 1998 up until 2014. Who knows, maybe NHL players will be back in the Olympics, maybe they won't, but it was definitely something that changed the NHL from 1998 to 2014. Throughout the beginning decades of the NHL, players would use straight sticks, which does sound pretty crazy now considering how crazy all NHL players are about to curve on their stick, but it was something that actually happened for a long time. But in the late 1950s, NHL great Stan Makita once got his stick caught in the door, causing it to bend, and would continue to play with the bent stick and ended up liking it. Players like Stan Makita and Brett Hall are big reasons why the NHL stepped in and implemented the banana blade rule in 1970, which means that you can't have a curve on your stick that exceeds 3 fourths of an inch. If you're caught with an illegal curve, you will be given a 2 minute minor penalty and forced to change your stick. The curved blade really had a big impact on the NHL and the direction that it was heading in, and obviously changed the league forever, and in an interview when talking about the invention of the curved stick, Makita said it happened the same way all great inventions happen, by accident. Makita is an absolute legend and played a big role in the history of the NHL. May he rest in peace. Before 1956, if you scored a goal on the power play, the power play wouldn't actually end until the entire two minute penalty is up, so you had a chance to score multiple goals. And during the 1950s, the Montreal Canadiens were such a dominant team and seemingly scored multiple goals every single power play. The other five teams in the NHL at the time getting fed up with this eventually voted 5-1 to one that a power play would end after a goal is scored. This rule began in the 1956-57 season. And it is obviously something that we still see in the NHL today, where unless it is a major, the power play will end after a goal is scored. This is something that really changed the NHL forever. I mean, could you imagine if it was still like that in today's NHL? I can just see the headline right now, Alexander Ovechkin scores a hat trick in the same power play. This rule change was probably for the best. The 2004-2005 NHL lockout, definitely a very dark time for the NHL and especially for fans of the NHL. The 2012-2003 13 lockout was bad enough, but at least we still got the second half of the season and the playoffs. I can't imagine how hockey fans felt during the 2005-04 season, or the lack of the 2004-05 season. The league was amidst the bitter negotiations over the collective bargaining agreement with the NHLPA, and when the NHL did finally return the following season, it was without a TV contract from ESPN and suffered some serious fan backlash. I really can't imagine the NHL wanting to go through something like this again, they probably lost an extreme amount amount of money and they probably lost some fans too. I could however in the coming years see a lockout happen like the 2012-13 season especially with some of these massive contracts that have been signed over the past couple of years but other than that I really can't see the NHL missing out on a full season due to a lockout ever again. I hope I'm right because that would be devastating and then I definitely have to kickstart an NBA channel or something. It's crazy enough to think that NHL players never used to wear helmets, but it's even crazier to think that goalies never even used to wear a mask. 
mask, especially since players would literally be ripping pucks right at them. Of course, shots back then probably weren't as hard as the shots that we see in the NHL today, but still, goalies back then had to have a pretty big set of cojones to want to literally put themselves in front of that puck being ripped at them night after night. The first NHL goaltender to ever wear a mask was Clint Benedict of the Montreal Maroons, but it obstructed his view so much that he only wore it for the one game and then went back to wearing no mask at all. It was actually Montreal Canadiens goaltender Jacques Plante that took the stigma away of goalies can't wear a mask. His coach actually told him that he wasn't allowed to wear it in a game, but when Plante took a shot off the face against the Rangers, he refused to go back into the game unless he was allowed to wear his mask. After donning the goalie mask, Jacques Plante went on a big winning streak, which led to instant credibility to the idea for other goaltenders around the league. While the mask had sometimes looked downright frightening and something that you would see directly out of a horror movie, it worked and was definitely a smart move. If it hadn't been Jacques Plante, I'm sure another goaltender would have came along and refused to play without a mask just because of how dangerous it really is. It is a good thing that Jacques Plante set the trend for other goaltenders to wear masks before something tragic could have happened. I mean, a slap shot to the temple or the back of the head or something like that honestly could have been lethal. When Jacques Plante became the first goaltender to consistently wear a mask, it really did change the league forever. The salary cap in the NHL is always a hot topic, whether you're talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs and all the massive contracts that they have and how can they put players around them to really contend. Another example of the cap having a big impact on a team is when the Blackhawks traded away Artemi Panarin just because they didn't have the money to pay him what he was worth. Looking back at it now, Artemi Panarin is a superstar with the New York Rangers, making over $11 million per season. But the salary cap wasn't always a massive part of the National Hockey League. During the collective bargaining agreement negotiations in 2004 that ultimately led to the league's lockout, it was primarily revolving around player salaries. The league contended that its club spent about 75% of revenues on salaries, a percentage far higher than existed in other North American sports. Long story short, out of all of this, the NHLPA agreed to a hard salary cap based on league revenues. This definitely changed the league forever. We now see a salary cap floor where teams that aren't contending can't just not pay anybody, they have to have a certain amount of money spent on players. And of course, we have a salary cap limit. This season, it is $81.5 million, and it's actually set to go up a few million heading into next season. I honestly couldn't imagine the NHL without a salary cap, and being like the MLB where the richest teams can just go and spend, spend, spend. The NHL salary cap is in a pretty good place right now, and it's a big reason why the NHL probably has the best parity out of all major North American sports leagues. NHL games really used to sometimes end in ties. Not these kind of ties, but like a draw, where if neither team scored a goal in overtime, the game would end with neither team getting the victory and both team getting the same amount of points. But luckily, in the 2005-06 season, the NHL decided that all regular season and exhibition games would be decided by a shootout if the score was tied after overtime. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of the shootout, I'm not either, I wish the NHL would just end in continuous 3 on 3 overtime, but there is a lot of arguments against that so it does make sense. But no matter how you feel about a shootout, it's gonna be better than a tie, right? This is definitely something that changed the NHL forever, I mean, I could not imagine today an NHL game ending in a draw. Willie O'Ree, somebody who didn't light it up stats-wise throughout his NHL career, playing just 45 games and tallying 14 total points, but his impact is still felt today. Before making his NHL debut, Willie O'Ree was actually blind in his right eye due to being hit there by a puck two years earlier, which normally would have precluded him from playing in the NHL. However, O'Ree managed to keep it a secret until he made his debut with the Bruins on January 18th of 1958, becoming the first black male to ever play a game in the National Hockey League, paving the way for other players like Grant Fuhrer, who became the first black player to ever be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame, and guys like Jerome McGinley, who is at the very top of the Calgary Flames all-time points list, and even current NHL players like P.K. Subban, and the list can just go on and on. Willie O'Ree paved the way for these guys, and the day he made his NHL debut in 1958 changed the NHL forever. So that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. I had a lot of fun making this so if you guys want to see more videos like this make sure to let me know down in the comment section below another thing i want to say is thank you so much for 30,000 subscribers i honestly never thought the channel would hit that mark but it's just been crazy the amount of support you guys have shown over the past couple of months i can't say it enough but thank you guys for everything and if you did enjoy today's video again please make sure you go down there and drop a like on it and let me know if you want to see more videos like this and if you guys are new and you have not already make sure to hit that subscribe button if you do want to see some more nhl content and with that being said i will see you
see you guys all in the next video.